In this video, we'll take a look at the different problem types that appear on your Unit 6 test review. Um, most of these problem types involve factoring, so we want to have a general strategy when we're factoring these problems. And here is our general strategy to factor completely. Um, the first thing we always do is see if we can factor out the greatest common factor. Once we have the greatest common factor, so we have the greatest common factor factored out, then we want to determine how many terms we have, and that's going to kind of guide our factoring after that. So if we have two terms, then we want to check to see if we have a difference of squares. Three terms, we want to see if we can factor that into two binomials. Four terms, then we want to go ahead and factor by grouping. All right, now let's take a look at the first problem that I have here. I'm doing problem one. We're taking a look at problem one here. I have two terms, but before I want to see if I have a difference of squares, I want to see if I can factor out the greatest common factor. So I'll start with the numbers uh, 4 and 18. Well, the greatest common factor for 4 and 18 is going to be 2. Now let's take a look at the variables. If I look at the greatest common factor for x to the fifth and x to the third, well, there are at least three x's in each of these. There's five here, there's three there, so they at least have three in common. So I'm going to factor out an x to the third there. Now I'm bringing that out of set of one set of parentheses. When I divide 2x to the third out of the 4x to the fifth, I'll have 2x squared left. And when I divide 2 into 18, I get a positive 9. And when I divide x, x to the third out, I won't have any more x's left. So I'll get this as my factoring, 2x to the third times 2x squared plus 9. Let's take a look at question 3 now. I'm going to start again with seeing if I have a greatest common factor. Well, 9 and 25, they don't share any common factors, and they have an x, from here, x terms here, but I don't have any x's there. So there's no greatest common factor. So now I want to think, okay, two terms. Well, two terms, the only way I can factor two terms is the difference of squares. Well, I have the difference here. There's my minus sign, which is the difference. Now I just got to see if these are each perfect squares. 9x squared, well, 9, if I took 3 times 3, that would give me 9, and x times x would give me x squared. So this is a perfect square. 25, 5 times 5. So that also is a perfect square. So I do have a difference of squares here. And so I'm going to factor this into two binomials. And what I want to do is I want to just take what times itself would give me 9x squared. Well, that's 3x and 3x, so those are going to go in the first spots. And then what times itself will give me 25? That's 5 and 5. And now to factor a difference of squares, I just make one positive, one negative. So there's my factor of 9x squared minus 25. Okay, now let's take a look at problem 4b. In 4b, I want to start by seeing if I have a greatest common factor. Well, I have a y here, a y here, and a y there. So those would all be a common factor of y, but I don't have a y there. So there's no greatest common factor of y. If I look at my numbers 1, 5, 10, and 50, the only common factor that we have there is 1. That's not exciting, so we don't factor that out. So now, no greatest common factor. So now I want to see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. So now I want to try to factor by grouping. And the way that I do this is I group these first two together and then I group the second two together and see if there is a greatest common factor in each of these groups. Well, the first group, I take a look, I have a y, two y's here, y squared, one y there, so that has a common factor of y. So I'm gonna factor that y out of that first group, that would give me y plus five x. Let's take a look at the second group here. Uh, 10 and 50, that has a greatest common factor of 10. So I could factor a 10 out of each of those, and that's a positive 10, since everything there was positive. So I'll factor a 10 out of that second group. When I factor a 10 out here, I'll get y plus 5x. And lo and behold, this is going to factor by grouping. And the way that I know that is I get this y plus 5x and y plus 5x inside my parentheses. When I have this situation, now I can factor this by grouping. And so my first binomial is just going to be this y and this positive 10, so that would be y plus 10. And my second binomial is going to be this y plus 5x. And you can see when I go to multiply this back, the first thing I would do here is I would distribute this y, which means I'm going to take y times this y plus 5x, which is exactly what I'm doing right here, taking y times the y plus 5x. Second thing I would do to multiply this is I would take this positive 10 times y plus 5x, and that's exactly what I'm doing here with this 10. So these multiplication problems are exactly the same thing. This is the simpler way to write it, so that's why when we factor it, we leave it in this form. Alright, next problem we'll take a look at is problem 5. Um, 
I don't have a greatest common factor here, 3, 22, and 16, and there aren't R's in all the terms, so I don't have a greatest common factor. I have three terms, and so I want to just see if this will factor into two binomials, and I'm going to do this by a little bit of guess and check. Well, for 3, I have to choose 3 times 1. So I'll have 3R times 1R. Now let's look at this last term. This last term is negative. Well, to get a negative answer in the end, that means I'm going to have to have one positive, one negative. And now I just want to I want to check some, some multiples or some factors of 16 here until I get the right one so that I add to 22. Um, I'm going to have to get pretty big. I'm thinking with 16, if I did 4, if I did 4 and 4, that's not going to quite get me, well, no, actually, it won't get me to 22 because that would give me 12. So I'm thinking i got to go a little bit bigger than that. So I'm going to try 2 and 8. And I'm going to put the 8 over here because if I put the 8 right here, that 3R is going to multiply that 8 when I look at the outsides there. And that's going to give me uh, 24. And then let's see, 2 times 8 would give me 16, so I need a 2 here. So let's take a look at these outsides and insides are going to work. So the outsides here, 3R times 8, that's going to give me 24R, uh, negative 24R. The insides give me a positive 2R. And notice that's one's negative and one's positive, so this is going to give me a difference of 22. So there's going to be a little cancellation to get 22, but I wanted to have a positive 22, and you'll notice the way I have it set up right now, I'm going to have a negative 22. So I need to switch these signs. I need to make that a positive 8, and then make this a negative 2. And now that'll work. Now my outsides are positive 24, and my insides are negative 2. That would add to give me that positive 22 for my middle term. So there's my factoring. All right, let's take a look now at 9b, see if I have a greatest common factor first, 6, 17, and 12. No, no greatest common factor there. So I want to just go ahead and factor this. Uh, 6, I have a couple choices here. I can use 6 and 1, or I can use 2 and 3. I'll just randomly try 2 and 3 first here, and if it doesn't work, I'll try 6 and 1. So I'll try 2x and 3x. Let's look at this last term. Last term is positive. That tells me the signs have to be the same, either plus plus or minus minus. Middle term is negative, so that tells me I want to go minus minus. Now we want to just see if we can get the outsides and insides to add up to negative 17 here. So maybe I'm thinking um, 3 and 4 with 12 will be my first try. If it doesn't work, I'll try something else. So let's see, 3 and 4. Let's try, just try, just like I said it, 3 and 4. Let's look at the outsides now. The outsides here, 2x times negative 4 is going to give me negative 8x. The insides, negative 3 times positive 3 is going to give me negative 9x. Negative 8x plus a negative 9x will give me negative 17x. So on the first try here, I got this factoring. Maybe I had some intuition, but maybe it was just luck. If this didn't work, then I would have tried maybe 2 and 6 with 12. And if that didn't work, then I would have tried 12 and 1. If that didn't work, then I would have gone all the way back to the 6. And instead of trying 2 and 3, I would have tried 6 and 1. But as it turned out, I got lucky I got it on the first try there. All right, next problem we'll take a look at is 12. Uh, first start with the greatest common factor. There aren't any greatest common factors. Notice I have two terms. So that was me. The only way this is going to factor is if this is a difference of squares. Well, it's a difference. Now let's see if we have squares there. Something times itself to give me a to the fourth? Sure. a squared times a squared would give me a to the fourth. Something times itself to give me 1? Well, 1 times 1. So this is going to factor a squared plus 1 times a squared minus 1. Now we want to check one more time here. Notice we factor this once, but we want to make sure we factor completely. I don't have a difference of squares here, but I do right here. This is a squared minus 1. This is a perfect square. a times a would give me a squared, and then again 1 times 1 would give me 1. So I need to factor this one more time. So I'm going to bring down this a squared plus 1, and now I'm going to factor this difference of squares into two binomials again. And so that's going to be a plus 1, a minus 1. And there's my final factoring for 12. Okay, next we'll take a look at 14. Uh, 14, I want to check to see if there's a greatest common factor in here. And in fact, there is a greatest common factor in here. Uh, 4, 28, and 40. 4 is the common factor of all of those, and I think that's the greatest common factor. So I'm going to pull the 4 out. Notice with the x's, I don't have any x common factors there. So 4 is going to be the best that I can do for the greatest common factor. 
So when I divide a 4 out of this first term, that's going to give me x squared. 4 out of the second term, that's going to give me negative 7x. 4 out of the last term, that's going to give me positive 10. Now I'm not done. I want to have a trinomial in here. I want to see if I can factor this trinomial into two binomials. So I'm going to bring that 4 down. I don't want to forget that. And now I'll go to see if I can factor this. Well, I need x and x. Look at the last term is positive. That tells me signs have to be the same, either plus plus or minus minus. The negative on the middle term tells me I've got to go minus minus. And my factors of 10, 10 and 1, and 2 and 5. Well, I think 2 and 5 are going to add to give me the 7 that I want, so I'm going to put a 2 and 5 in there. Now let's check the outsides and insides. Outsides would give me negative 5x. Insides would give me negative 2x. If I add negative 5x and negative 2x together, that does give me negative 7x. So this is my factoring. I bring this 4 on the outside, and then times x minus 2 times x minus 5. Okay, in 17 and 18 we're asked to solve each of these equations and the way that we're going to solve these equations is by factoring. Now for this to work I have to have a zero on one side of the equation and my expression on the left side of the equation factored. This first problem I have a zero over here so all I need to do is factor this. Well let's first check to see if there's a greatest common factor. Well 5 and 10 that's a greatest common factor of 5 in each of those and I have an x squared and an x so that's the greatest common factor of x. So my greatest common factor then is 5x. And let's see what would I have left. If I divide a 5x out of that first term, I would have just an x left. 5x out of that next term, I would have just a minus 2 left. And this equals 0. Now here's the idea. If I can get this expression on the outside equal to 0, then I would be taking 0 times something. It doesn't matter what I would take at times. 0 times something would still give me 0. So if this expression right here can equal 0, then this left side would also equal 0. Well, with 5x, this is multiplication. 5 times something, we want it to be 0. Well, 5 times 0 would give me 0 on the outside, and then I would be taking 0 times this next expression, which would give me an answer of 0. So my first solution here is that x equals 0. My next solution, and usually we draw a line like this between them, my next solution is if I can get this next expression, x minus 2 to equal 0. Well, I can. If I put a positive 2 in there, I'd have 2 minus 2, which would give me 0. And then I'd be taking 0 times this on the outside, which would give me 0. So that would be a true statement. So my other solution there is x equals 2. Now let's take a look at 19b. All right, in 19b, you'll notice I don't have 0 on this side. So i got to move this stuff around and get the 72 over here so I have 0 on this side. But before I do that, I actually want to multiply this out. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the m, which is going to give me m squared plus 8m. Now I distribute the negative 6, which is going to give me negative 6m. And then negative 6 times positive 8 is going to give me a negative 48, and that equals 72. Now, as I mentioned, let's uh, keep simplifying here with this multiplication. So I'll have m squared plus 2m minus 48 equals 72. Now I want to get rid of that 72, so I would subtract 72 from both sides. And let's see, I'll have m squared plus 2m. I know it's going to equal 0. Now i got to do some actually addition here. Notice that was a negative 48 and a negative 72, so I'm going to add those together to make more negatives. So 8 and 2 is 10, carry the 1, um, 1 and 4 is 5, 5 plus 7 is 12, so I get a negative 120 there. Now that I've got it set up like this, a trinomial equal to 0, now I'm going to see if I can factor that trinomial. So I have the problem up a little bit here. So I'm going to factor this. So I want uh, m and m. My last term is negative, so I want a plus and a minus. Now I'm thinking things that multiply together to give me 120 but have a difference of 2. I know it's a difference because 1 is positive, 1 is negative. Well, 12 and 10 is going to work nicely for that. So there's 12, there's 10. I'm not done now because I've got to find my solutions. Okay, so let's see. I need this to equal 0. Well, in this case, that would just be m equals negative 12. And over here, if that for, for that to equal 0, m would have to be 10. Okay, so I get two solutions. m equals negative 12 or m equals 10.